oh, there's my timer. And um, Juan Vasquez with Devante. And um, they will be presenting on challenges of Latin America in the global environmental geopolitics of the 21st century. Challenges of Latin American global environment and geopolitics of the 21st century. A world ecology perspective from periphery. Introduction. With global environmental crisis reality, the biodiversity and ecosystem have become a key aspect of the proper functioning of the global planetary ecosystem. Therefore, the demand for the conservation of the planet will be emphasized emphasizes because, after all, it's about our own conservation. This situation can be highly confrontational when considering that the hegemonic model of life imposed by the USA and its principal allies of the developed capitalist world is characterized schematically by high level of consumption. However, given the large number of inhabitants of the planet and its growth projection, it is not possible for her to hold that standard and lifestyle for all. That is, if human consumption is brought to power units, there is no, there is no enough energy on the planet for all its inhabitants to reach the level of consumption on an average USA citizen. Therefore, some authors conclude that current trend to the neoliberal capitalism are unsustainable from an ecological point of view, for which reason the global ecological crisis is the ultimate space-time tension between making it a habitable place and exploiting it as resource space. However, this does not mean that the dominant economic model will change due to the simple fact of environmental awareness, but of the power elites. On the contrary, power will always seek solutions that allow it not only to ensure its survival, but also its power and hegemonic control. For this reason, in this article, we propose that the ecological and or environmental factor is projected as an important and structuring generator of conflicts in the growing global order information especially in relation to the sovereignty of nation state, especially those of the global south. In this stage of transition in which we find ourselves towards a new world order and on which it is difficult to predict its duration, probably much of this century, the situation in Latin America and the Caribbean is extremely delicate, precisely because of its physical and human geographical reality. As everybody knows, from its origin until nowadays, Latin America has been placed in the peripheral position in the modern world system, specifically due to its privileged geography. This region has always provided natural resources and raw material for the centers, minerals, cotton, sugar, coffee, tobacco, and others, as well as cheap labor power and slave labor. <coughs> in the same way, Latin America and the Caribbean has been forced to be a consumer of the manufactured product of the center. Nowadays, in the environmental crisis epoch, the requirement demanded by the center to Latin America have become more and more complex. Today, Latin America not only has to be supply natural resource for the North, but also must contribute in an important way to the health global ecosystem. In this sense, is extraordinarily important for the good global ecosystem functioning, the biodiversity and ecosystem contains in the Latin America, like the Amazonia, for example. For this reason, the non-human intervention of these ecosystems has been turned into a new fundamental demand for the elites of the global north. Obviously, the environmental awareness 
of the elite from the north regarding the ecological importance of Latin America has been a gradual but always growing process. In fact, in the current 21st century, a very important numbers of economics and military elites from the north that have become green not only seek a green capitalism, but, all, but also a green imperial geopolitics. And in this sense, the biogeographical Latin America space is one of their main objectives. One, the Latin American geographic space in relation to the global geographic space. The first thing to keep in mind is that Latin America has only 8.5% of the world's population. And if we just refer to the South America alone, this percentage drops to 6%. In fact, 90% of the world's population is concentrated in the temperate zone of the Northern Hemisphere, with Europe and Asia being the most populous continent, holding 86% of the world's population. Only Oceania, with 2.9% of the world's population, is less populated than Latin America. However, unlike Latin America, Oceania's territory is largely desert. If we take into account that the destruction, that the destruction of ecosystem among all aspects is the greatest threat to the biodiversity, and this destruction has primarily occurred through human intervention, it is evident that territories with relatively smaller population have ecosystems which are much healthy and more pristine. In this respect, it is considered that the at planetary level, only 51.9% of land area, approximately 19 million square kilometers, hasn't been transformed by man. However, if you exclude the desert, rocky, and frost areas, then the ecosystems that have not been processed or where little intervention has taken place compose only 27% of the land. In this sense, South America has 22.5% of its territory where little intervention has taken place, mainly the Amazon ecosystem. Two, some critical aspects of Latin America in environmental geopolitics. Schematically, we can present some geographic and biogeographical aspects of Latin America that are transformed into strategic resource highly demanded by the elite of the global north. A. Biodiversity. Latin America is a mega diverse continent. Of the 20 countries on the planet with the largest biodiversity, eight are Latin American countries Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, Peru, Venezuela, Bolivia, and Costa Rica. More particularly, the Amazon is the territory of the planet in which the greatest biodiversity in the world is concentrated. The discussion regarding the fate of the Amazonian ecosystem is clarifying example of how, as a result of the environmental crisis, ecosystems taking in their entirety have become a strategic resource in themselves. And while it is true that the interest of the North of appropriating this territory date back to the 19th century, with the socialization of the global environmental crisis problem in the second half of the 20th century, this interest in their appropriation and control has acquired a greater and new impetus, given that this region become a vital strategic objective for the global North as has been pointed out correctly. Today, the Amazon has reached a previously never seen relevance due to two main reasons. The first is the increase in importance of the climate regime in the global context, bringing such issues as biodiversity governance to the surface. The second is the change in the way nature is represented, a change attributed to the increasing importance of nature in the political and economic spheres. All present and the future discussion of the environmental go through the South American forest, which is a great regulator of the ecosystem service. Despite having had a place in the international state since colonial times, in the new context, the Amazon has gone, has gone on to have a strategic. B. Fresh water. 
The issue of fresh water has been placed on the world's public agenda due to the fact that the availability of this resource has been a concern of the elite of the global north for decades. This concern of the global north elite regarding to the threat of shortage of fresh water is no less for the fate of Latin America because of the 30 countries in the world with the largest reserve of fresh water chain are in Latin America. And if we only take the case of South America, we see that it important increases because this region has 25% of the world's fresh water and barely concentrates 6% of the global population. This means that South America is the region in the world that has the greatest concentration of fresh water resource in relation to its more population which made it the main target of the appropriation and control on the part of the Global North, that is, by their state as well as their corporation and multinational companies. C, C the access to Antarctica. The case of Antarctica is one of the less dealt with topics regarding the issue of resource scarcity, access to fresh water and environmental crisis in general. However, it is a decisive variable in the geopolitics of the 21st century due to the importance it has for the fate of humanity. This continent, the fourth in extension of the planet, is a geographical space and vital ecosystem for planetary functioning in addition to being the world's largest freshwater reservoir. It is also an important reservoir of natural resources. It is also influenced the global climate system, among other factors. And it is practically unpopulated since it is the only continent that has no original human settlement due to its extreme climate. This situation is of utmost importance to Latin America because the southern cone, consisting of the territories of Chile and Argentina, have a determinate strategic value regarding this continent. This is the case since, although the coastal edge of Antarctica has a perimeter of 23,000 kilometers, Chile and Argentina are the closest countries to the Antarctic Peninsula, the only portion of the continent that is not that is not permanently covered by layers of ice and snow, thus giving the easy access throughout the year. Therefore, it is regarded as the gateway to Antarctica. D. Strategic natural resource. As well, now, Latin America side, it conquered by the Europeans, has become an important supplier of, of natural resources for the domestic and industrial consumption of the center. As Monica Brugman has said, the world system based on the international division of labor between industrial and manufacturing zone and countries producing raw materials, strategic minerals, and agricultural products consolidate the hegemonic power of the central countries and their dominance in relation to the peripheral or dependent areas and the economic space that occupy a semi periphery position. Now, since the end of the Cold War, access to this resource for the Global North has become increasingly dramatic, precisely because of what Jason Moore has pointed out when he speaks the end of the cheap nature. More specifically, the end of access to the cheap raw material has been exacerbated by two particular reasons. On the one hand, the global environmental crisis itself. And in the other hand, the unprecedented industrial and economic growth of Asia, where China is the archetypical example. This last situation has exponentially increased the demand for raw materials, energy, and food. This situation has led to the increased economical and political value of the territories capable of producing them. For this reason, in 2007, the United States Geological Survey indicate that in order to adequately respond to the evolution of national purity in the 21st century, it should be taken into consideration that the emergence of the global economy affects the demand for all resources. 
At the same time, the use of this natural resource is occurring on a scale that can modify the terrestrial, marine, and atmospheric environments on which human civilization depends. The use and competition for natural resources and on a global scale and natural threat to this resource has the potential to impact the nation's ability to sustain its economy, national security, quality of life, and the natural environment. And this situation puts Latin America back a necessary body for the center. As also been pointed out, Latin America is one of the main regions from which the USA imports the strategic mineral it needs. The USA imports from Latin America 93% of the strontium it consumes, 66% of lithium, 61% of fluoride, 59% of silver, 56% of rhenium, 54% of, of tin, and 44% of platinum. Likewise, the region of the world is rich in niobium, used in the steel and aerospace industry. In cover, it owns 48% of the world reserve. It is also an important oil reserve and it is region the sport for commodity. Three, the China factor. Finally, it's necessary to consider the impact of China, of China on the Latin American economy. Between 2010, the volume of trade between Latin America and China increased by 11, 19, 3 percent, and 277,175. China and American bilateral trade went for the 15,765 million dollars in 21 to more than 277,000 ounces. And 175 million dollars in 2014. Today, China is the second largest trading partner on the region and the first for countries such as Brazil, Chile, Peru, and Uruguay. But just as the traditional North South economic relationship has been, Latin America sells natural resources and commodities to China and buys industrial products with increasing added value and high technology. On the other hand, The growing, the growing cheers influence in Latin America seriously concerned the USA that from the Monroe Doctrine onwards 1823, it's considered the Latin America it is backyard. For this reason, in the last tour of the USA Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, to the region in April 2019, he warned the Latin American political economic elite that it was necessary to stop the trade of the Latin America with China, with China in a radical manner. <coughs> the United States considered the China's influence in Latin America as a danger to its national security, and they were not going to sit idly by. Conclusion. In synthesis, the main hypothesis that arises in this world is that the geopolitics of the 21st century it will be determined by the environmental problematic because we walk through a historical epoch in which the end of the cheap nature has been reached. In this scenario, Latin America will be transformed, unfortunately, into the theater of operation where the main powers of the global north will be confronted. The current hegemo hegemonic powers led by the steel hegemon, the USA, as well as by the aspirant to succeed him. Thank you very much.